to start off these previews, we're going to start off with the Kansas City Chiefs, led by the greatest quarterback in NFL history, Patrick Mahomes. And the, <laughs> the question with them is kind of an, a simple question to ask. Can they repeat this season and win back-to-back Super Bowls? That's really the question. Like, I know Drew could not wait to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs, so I want to give this time to let you go wow, and talk about your favorite true prick. team. You're a true prick. <laughs> Um, yes, Kansas City. They're a great team. I mean, what else do you want me to say? I'm here, of course. We all understand that I'm a Broncos fan, and I was in absolute misery last uh, the entire last season, especially going into the season. Of course, they proved me to be one of the most wrong there ever was on another team. I said that this wide receiver room was a, a huge question mark, especially after Tyree Kill was gone. Patrick Mahomes proved that he doesn't need a true star to, to be on that cast. Of course, outside of Travis Kelsey, one of the all-time great tight ends. And when you have Andy Reid as also one of the all-time great play callers that there is, it's just the ultimate trifecta. They're going to be able to get a job done. They're going to be able to win games. I believe they still finish as the number one seed. Obviously, that was huge in terms of getting some rest. They went on to win the Super Bowl. The rest is history, yada, yada, yada. But, of course, somehow, some way, after winning the, the Super Bowl, they find a way to get better. And so what's really unfortunate for me is here, Kansas City has one of the best offensive lines in the game. Kansas City has the best tight end in the game by far. Kansas City has the best quarterback in the game by far. Um, at the running back position, it really does not matter. They ran a, a combination of Isaiah, Isaiah Pacheco and, of course, Jarek McKinnon, who was great in the passing game, especially for the last back half of the season and into the, to the playoffs. But that was more so Isaiah Pacheco's bread and butter also. He was dominant, especially in the run game. But the wide receiver, right? You're asking me to pick a flaw in this offense. Yeah, I guess I can point to the wide receiver, but with Patrick Mahomes, it does not matter. Nope. You're going to have MVS, who is going to be a repeat offender in this offense. Yes, Sky Moore, we already talked about our investments. Sky Moore is definitely a name to look out for. Rasheed Rice is definitely someone to look out for. Justin Ross, who you mentioned as a redshirt freshman for Sky Moore, Justin Ross is also another one of those guys because as an undrafted rookie, they didn't need to keep Justin Ross around. They understand his skill set, 6'4", over 200 pounds, a big body type dude. Mahomes clearly takes a liking to him, likes to have him around. I, I believe that they've had, he's been running with the first team, as has Rasheed Rice. So there's going to be a lot of interchangeable pieces, especially at that wide receiver position. I, I mean, I, I if you want me to nitpick, sure, wide receivers, but so long as Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback, it's really not going to matter. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Secondary-wise, you have Trent McDuffie going into year two. He was very, very good in year one. They go and they add, if I mispronounce his name, I apologize, Charge Omenu from the edge. That I, Omenahu. Omenahu, thank you. They added Drew Tranquil, a linebacker as well. I mean, this team, as long as Mahomes is the quarterback, as long as Andy Reid is the offensive play caller, you can just already cash in 13 games that they're going to win automatically. So, yeah, I, I'm glad that you let me go first so I don't have to talk about them anymore. <laughs> and I don't want to skip over Justin Ross because he's someone, like you mentioned, went undrafted, but he was a highly touted For sure. NFL prospect before he's had some really bad like neck injuries. Um, freshman year at Clemson, he averaged 22 yards per reception, 1,000 yards on 46 catches, followed up by 806 yards on 66 receptions. His junior year, he had his injury, um, and he really didn't, he didn't play at all in 2020. He played some in 2021. Um, but this is a guy who, if he didn't get hurt, he would have been a first round pick. If he didn't get hurt, he probably would have been the first receiver off the board. So the talent is there. It's just the injury concerns for sure. Um, but for the chiefs, you know, last season, it was different because they lost Tyree kill, right? So we had some question marks about this offense. We all still thought they'd be really good, but we thought maybe they would take a step back, but they didn't slow down. Mahomes, number one EPA per play, number two in completion percentage over expectation, number two in big time throws third lowest turnover worthy play rate, number one yards per game, number one points per game. The offense continued to be the best offense in football, even while losing the most explosive receiver in the NFL. What Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Andy Reid can do, quarterbacks it, crazy, it doesn't matter what receivers could be Rasheed Rice, it could be Sky Moore, MBS, Juju. I think for the remainder of, of Mahomes' career, I should say with Travis Kelsey, I don't know if they're ever going to get a true number one receiver but I also don't think they ever need a true number one receiver. That's how dominant they are. They found Pacheco in round seven, who ended up having um, you know, a nice season towards the end of the year. You have Jarek McKinnon, who's catching passes out of the backfield. You still have Clyde there, who had a bit of a role last season. Um, but they're constantly just going to bring guys in and out. And as long as Kelsey's there as their number one, 
They're going to figure out ways to be a top offense. This guy's grinning his ass off like he's been a Chiefs fan his whole life. Shit is gross. Um, and uh. <laughs> defensively, they have a lot of young players. You know, they're basically the opposite of the Steelers. The Steelers have the number one paid defense and the last paid offense. The Chiefs have, I don't know if they're number one, but they're up there in terms of offense. And they're last in defense because you have Nick Bolton on his rookie contract going to year three. Legereus Sneed going to year four. McDuffie year two. Karloff this year two. Um, Jalen Watson, DB, who struggled a bit of his rookie year, but going into year two. And then you have the couple veterans and Chris Jones and Justin Reed, who both had great years. Chris Jones, obviously being one of, if not the best interior defensive linemen. And uh, Justin Reed had a bit of bounce back year from his last year in Houston. So on top of that, they have arguably the best coaching staff in the league with Andy Reid on offense, Spags on defense. And Nagy. There, there's not much to say about this team. Did, did you see that clip on quarterback where he's sitting next to Matt Nagy? It was third and 14 with <laughs> against the Bengals. said, oh, you got to run it here. And they throw it, pick up a first down and win the game. Um, yeah, I don't know what Matt Nagy's really doing. But not much to say about this Chiefs team. Um, not going to spoil anything, but they're going to win the division. <laughs> can, can you believe that? Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Well, the Chiefs, I would say. Can you believe that they've won a division eight years in a row? It's crazy. Time flies. Three with Alex Smith, and then the next five with Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, this is this is absurd. Out of 80 games he started, he's only lost two games by more than one score. In five years as a starter, two Super Bowl wins, two Super Bowl MVPs, two NFL MVPs, five AFC Championship games. He, he's a lot to go to the AFC Championship every single year. He's basically like Five division titles. Five 12-win yes. seasons. So what you said, you can lock it in. They win 13. Yeah, you can lock it in. They're winning 12-plus every single season with Mahomes under the helm. And five Pro Bowls. You know, I was grinning, Dells, <laughs> because I just got flashbacks. Last year in the offseason, there was some disrespect. I'm going to give you some slack. But from this guy, oh, <laughs> Mahomes has to prove himself. He did. No, he did nuts. not. He, he, he has to prove himself. This Without was Tyree, the year the Broncos was going to win the division. You know, whatever. Can't I understand you're a fan. To, to leave, and I will say the same exact but thing. Drew, Drew was Drew right here was reluctantly put in respect on Mahomes. I need Reed last to year. Too. Show me that he's not a system QB. Go, go listen to this guy last year. And also, oh, the disrespect was off the charts. Then in the Super Bowl, when I told y'all they got the best coach, they got the best quarterback, they got the best tight end. Oh, you guys wow, told surprise, me surprise. those are those the are three those are three players. Those are three players. So y'all slept, man. Y'all slept. And then we're looking at this team now. They're in a totally different position than than they're coming into now versus last year. Last year, they were plus one thousand to win the Super Bowl. That's how much they were getting slept on. And Mahomes answered every single question despite losing Tyreek Hill. They, Blind you know, te teams played too high on them. And last year, Mahomes, two years ago, I should say two seasons ago, he struggled. Last season, he was the best quarterback against it. But there are some question marks with the Chiefs. And there's some legitimate question marks with the Chiefs. The biggest one is Chris Jones. He has not reported to camp yet. He played at a defensive player of the year level last season. And this guy changes their defense from being bottom 20 to being a, a top 15, top 10 group in the NFL. He's one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL. I think he's top two. The only person you could put over him is Aaron Donald. And I think Aaron Donald more so is, is living off the reputation of being the best. I think Relax. Chris Jones last year played at the best level <laughs> of any defensive tackle you in the miss NFL. one season automatically when you're – Probably, arguably, the greatest defensive player of all time. No, I know Aaron Donald is one of the best defensive players of all time, but I think Chris Jones last year had a better individual season than him. Sure, he missed, what, seven games? I would assume so. No, I'm just saying, when they were on the field, Chris Jones, highest pass rush win rate great, of any player. He was amazing. And he was getting double teamed more than any player either. Amazing. And their secondary, you mentioned it. You know, Trent McDuffie, I think, is amazing. He was somebody that, out of the draft, I was very high uh, on. Yep. Jalen Watson, as a seventh-round rookie, was... Impressive. He's an average corner, but for a seventh rounder to play at that level, you find that impressive. And Legereus Sneed, people don't talk about him enough. I know when it comes to the Chiefs, we look at Reed, we look at Kelsey and Mahomes, but Legereus Sneed is one of the best slot corners in the NFL, and he's somebody that was a big reason why this secondary had success, but this secondary is relying on the front seven getting pressure. And when the front seven doesn't get pressure, their secondary is leaky. Another question mark I have is Harrison Butker. Last year, he had 78% of his field goals, which was a career low. And 
in some games that cost them versus the Colts in the regular regular season uh, that cost that them. The Matt Ryan masterclass <laughs> at Alec Pierce. I was I, I was, was in hell. I, I was dancing. But Harrison Bucker, somebody that I think he should bounce back. He's been a great kicker for some years now, but that's a question mark. I mentioned earlier. I think I think Sky Moore will replace Juju just fine, and I'm interested to see if this team has moved on from Clyde Edwards Alaire because Jarek McKinnon last year was a third down running back because he's one of the best running backs at pass pro and he just played better than uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire. So those are the big storylines that I'm looking to see. I know some people will say the Chiefs got weaker at tackle because Orlando Brown and Andrew Wiley left. Yep. Jawan Taylor at right tackle, Donovan Smith at left tackle. You know, Jawan Taylor's a good right tackle. Donovan Smith last year was leaky Bad. on the left side for Tom Brady. But Andrew Brown and Andrew we- Orlando Brown and Andrew Wiley last year finished first and second in pressures allowed by tackles last season. So last year, Mahomes wasn't playing with very good tackle play. It's just the interior of the offensive line is one of the best trios, if not the best trio, in the league. For sure. But I find it hard to believe this year that Mahomes would be tested more than he was last year. Last year, Mahomes faced nine top 15 defenses, the most he's ever faced in his career, and he passed all those tests with flying colors with no true wide receiver number one. And this is a good sign for the defense in the future. They were 22nd in EPA per drop back, but when LeJarrius Sneed, Trent McDuffie, and Jalen Watson were all on the field, they were first in EPA per drop back on 168 snaps, which is a pretty good sample size. So when these three are healthy, that defense can take it to another level. And I think if the Chiefs want to be a dynasty and want to win back-to-back, it's going to be on the defense to now ascend to a better level. We know Mahomes can win with an average defense, but if this defense can ever become great and they have some young pieces, I mean, we're talking about a legitimate Patriots, 49ers, Cowboys like dynasty with, with the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean they're a dynasty without having that top of the line defense. Honestly, they don't need it. Like they really don't. As long as they're gonna have Patrick Mahomes and those boys on offense, the defense just has to be respectable. They have to step up in on third down in the red zone in the playoffs. Well, they hold uh, the Chief uh, the Bengals to seven, seventeen points, twenty they points. Have. Right? It was a you know relatively low scoring game, definitely for the Bengals. So as long as they're showing up in those moments where. You're not expecting them to be elite week in and week out, but if they're doing the small things right in those you know crucial spots, the offense is going to do enough to score. Mahomes has been pretty damn good over these last couple of seasons. So uh, what else is there really to say other than MVP, Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVP? The Chiefs are going to be good. How about yeah. we just talk about the Chargers? Here we please? go. Team but that we actually beat. Nick Bolton. Nick Bolton. Yep, had a great I- year. I love him. Love. Just to just to shed some, I've been loved him. What are you talking why, about? Why can't loved. he love Nick Bolton? Uh, just Chargers, no Chiefs fan players. He suddenly oh. loves. Oh, yeah. no, he, he's Go. he's been talking about. Nick I've been talking about Nick Bolton for a while. Like, I know, sure. you know that. Anyone I, on the I've, Chiefs I'll give you allegedly? Yeah. It's all right. But yeah, but I think outside of the big three, of course, with the Chiefs, just some players I'm really looking forward to and looking forward to their growth. Mm-hmm. Legere Sneed, I think, can even get better. Trent McDuffie is an obvious one. Justin Reed last year. We don't talk about him enough. He replaced Tyron Matthew. We didn't even know that Tyron Matthew left the Chiefs. Nick Bolton, George Karloftis was first amongst rookies in pressure rate. He was second behind sacks to Aiden Hutchinson, but Aiden Hutchinson, a lot of his snacks were were free sacks. But Karloftis, if he can develop into a a great pass rusher, and then the first rounder they got in the draft, I don't know how to pronounce his name. His first name is Felix, though. You know, they got some young players that if they develop, man, I, I think this team can really pop in. They also have a new starting safety in Brian <laughs> and Brian Cook. Well, the defense can pop because you. you know we don't put no respect on the defense. Nah. It's always Mahomes, but it's never a man. This defense actually gets timely stops whenever they the chips are on the table. I guess you could say last year it definitely doesn't get respect, but I feel like this off season, it, that's what they've tried to make a a primary point of emphasis. For, for this team, uh, signing, of course, a, an edge, signing a linebacker, bringing in some depth at the secondary position. They understand that Mahomes does need some help. So, again, with experience, I expect this defense to continue to improve. But, yes, it is dependent on Chris Jones being there opening day, which I don't have a worry about if I'm a Chiefs fan. They're going to get that done. He wants 30 mil. 30 hey, mil a season. You give it to him. That would be you right give behind it to uh, Aaron If they Donald. didn't give it to Tyreek Hill, part of me feels some... Some reservation. Pardon me, has reservation. I have to give it to Chris Jones. Yeah.